the concept of repentance is not just, I apologize. The concept of repentance is that you went somewhere that you shouldn't have gone, and now you need to return to where you should have been. It's actually the concept of repentance is not just, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, please forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. It's actually acknowledging, like, I got over here, and I shouldn't have been here. I need to get over there. The son, the prodigal son, who was out and about doing his own thing, when he returned to the father, he was doing, in Hebrew, teshuva. He was returning, returning. And Adonai is in the process of just returning everything. I really like how Amazon has, has worked out its return policy. It's become so easy to return things. Like Susie buys something on Amazon and she decides she doesn't like it. We don't even need to pack it up. I just need to bring it as it is to the UPS store on 44 and say, here, you take care of it. It's so easy to return on Amazon, but it's not so easy for us to return. It's not so easy for us to return because we always repent. We always just repent. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But there's this pull to do what we just repented of because we have this propensity and this pattern to just continue to do things that we don't want to do. And Paul talks about that. He does the things he doesn't want to do. And, oh, there's this wretched man that I am who's going who's gonna to save me. But God is in the process of returning, returning everything to as it should be. Like, this world got messed up pretty early. It got messed up pretty early. Thank God that God didn't think it was a mistake to make mankind because the first man and the first woman messed it up. Like, it didn't take long for humankind to just mess it up, for us to not listen, for us to do what we shouldn't have done. It, it's so easy for us to mess it up. It's so easy for us to mess it up. And I remember, like, if you read, we're going to hit the first Torah portion in Genesis, Genesis 1. We're going to hit it in three weeks. Three weeks. We're in the time, not to get ahead of myself, but in three weeks, we're going to be at Genesis 1, and we're going to be reading again, Let There Be Light. And we're going to be reading that whole creation story and all the stories again that follow that. You're, you go from the creation of the world with Adam and Eve to the destruction of the world with Noah in like six chapters. And then after the world starts getting repaired, we have the Tower of Babel story where we mess it up again. It's so easy for us to mess it up. But in the Shabbat of return, Shabbat Shuvah, I don't only think about how we need to return to God and repent. I, when I think of Shabbat Shuva, I think of the return of the Lord. The Sabbath of return. And when we think about the return of the Lord, we recognize that it's him that's going to be doing the reparation of everything. It's ultimately him that's going to do it. It's not going to be our repentance that's going to rectify this world. Ultimately, he's going to do it because we repent and we seek to get things right and we mess it up again and we seek to get things right and we mess it up again and Yeshua is returning and he's going to set things right once and for all. And he's going to repair this world. I think it's something that gets missed in Christian eschatology, when we're just raptured out and he destroys the world, we miss the, the basics of end times eschatology in the Old Testament, which is that the Messiah is going to come and he's going to repair everything. The, the wolf and the lamb are going to lay with each other, people that have, which means that people that have conflict will no longer have conflict. Nation will no longer rise against nation, it says. We do our part now, and we do our best now, and we return and we repent now, but God's going to restore it all. So on the Sabbath of return, I think of the return of the king. 
and how he is going to restore everything to its pre-messed up nature. Everything. Like this world has a pre-messed up nature. Pre-messed up nature. When God said, let there be light, he saw. He saw something. He saw something. He saw something and said, this is good. And he ended with saying, this is very good. He saw something amazing. He saw a, a, a world and he saw a kingdom really just interacting and, and working according to his ways. And then us humankind, we just mess it up. But he's going to bring everything back to as it should be, as what he saw. Because he is the God who is returning. And he is the God who will return this world to the state, to the way it was always meant to be from the beginning. What he saw before the foundations of the world, he will ensure it comes to pass. He sent forth his word before creation and said, let there be light. And his word will not return void. It won't return void. It won't return void. Everything that he saw, everything that he ordained will be accomplished in the fullness of the return of the Lord is when it happens. And just like the world, the world has this pre-fallen state, like this Eden state, we have almost like a pre-fallen state. It's what God sees in us. The fullness of what he saw when he said, let there be light in your mother's womb. He saw something spectacular. But here we are, and we mess it up. And we go to public school, and we're learning all these things that are not of God's ways, and sometimes we adopt the things that are not of God's ways that we just heard about, and we're in this wrestling match. We're in this place right now when Yeshua is pulling us towards that perfection, and the world is pulling us away from that perfection. And as much as it says, be transformed, do not be conformed, but be transformed. I like how Paul somehow did an English rhyme. Somehow in his letters, when he wrote in Greek, he wrote something that rhymes so beautifully in English. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. By the renewing of your mind. And I don't see that as a suggestion. Because it's the word of God. And the word of God doesn't make suggestions for us. The word of God speaks life. Let there be light. So if he says be transformed, we don't have a choice. So when Messiah is within us, we are transformed. But we're, we're pulled back. We're pulled, and we're in this wrestling match right now when we, we want to go this way, and the Spirit is calling us this way, and the world calls us this way, and it feels like our shoulders are getting dislocated. And it's not just the world that pulls us in another direction. It's like, it's our habits. It's our habitual patterns. It's, the, it's our upbringing. It's, it's our view of ourself. It's the hurts that we've experienced from others that we're holding on to. That just pull us away from that beautiful vision that God had of who you are in him from the beginning. I'm so thankful. You know, so Judaism and Messianic Judaism, Christianity, we all agree that the Messiah is coming back. Judaism's waiting for a Messiah to come and rectify the world. Christianity, Messianic Judaism, we're waiting for the Messiah to come back. We align on that. Where we disagree is that we believe that he's already come. We don't always just need to pray for his coming. He already came. And where he lives right now is within you. Christ in you is the hope of glory. In you, he lives right here. Because before he rectifies the world, before he changes this world, and the wolf will lie down with the lamb, and nations will not rise against nations, and a little boy will lead them, and all these beautiful things that he saw when he said, let there be light in the heavenlies. The Messiah that we believe in comes 
and to us so he can repair this world right here and bring us to where he wants us to be. So on the Sabbath of return, it's we're returning to God, but really he's returning us to what he already saw. And may we all be returned to what he saw. Because there's so many blockers and impediments to that. Like, life is tough. Life is tough. Life is hard. Life is hard. But God has come into us in the person of the Messiah to transform us. So we don't be conformed, we're transformed into the image that he saw when he said, let there be light in your mama's wombs. And the patterns, the patterns, the patterns, the patterns, the patterns, the patterns. Moses spoke about, or God spoke to Moses about the pattern of the tabernacle, the pattern. He told Moses, make sure you make this tabernacle. The tabernacle is a foreshadow of you. You are the temple of God, right? Make sure you make this according to the pattern, it says. The pattern, the pattern shown to you on the mountain. Now, what does it mean, the pattern? What does it mean, the pattern? The pattern. But the pattern is what? The pattern is like a blueprint, right? It's, it's, there's this blueprint that this earthly tabernacle was meant to mimic, right? That's the pattern, and we have to emulate that pattern, right? It's the, it's the blueprint that could be like the, you know, the source, the diagram, the blueprint for, for other things, the pattern. There's a pattern. There's a pattern. There's a pattern of Brandon. There's a pattern of Bob. There's a pattern of Miriam. There's a pattern. But we get into... Patterns, habits, patterns, patterns, patterns that take us away from the pattern. Because a pattern is not just a blueprint of a thing. A pattern can also be like a behavioral pattern. And we get stuck. We get stuck. In behavioral patterns, I'm asking Adonai to break us from behavioral patterns that was not part of his agenda from the beginning. Behavioral patterns that we've learned over time, that we keep repeating, like, like when my computer reboots, its programs start kicking off, firing off. Like when, the pro, like when the computer reboots, it's starting to run this program and that pro, this boot up system, and it's automatic. And some of the patterns that we follow are so automatic, they become so habitual, we don't even know we're doing it. We don't even know we're, in, we're, we're engaging in self-hatred because we've done it for so long, it's become normal. We don't know we're in, even depressed anymore because it's become so normal. We don't know we're engaging in addictive behaviors because it's become normal. It's like, you know, it's like driving a car. It's like when you first drive a car, like, you, you kind of realize, like, okay, this is not going to be good. Like, this is pretty scary. But then we get used to doing it, and it becomes pattern. Now we can drive a car and not even realize, like, we won't remember that we've even did it because it's become a pattern. But God wants to break us of patterns that aren't of him. God wants to break us of lies that we've listened to, and it's become our truth, but it's not his truth. When he returns us, you see, the coming of the Lord is when it's really all going to be done like for good. And it's not just the world that's going to change, it's us that's going to change. And Paul speaks about that. He says it is coming at the last trumpet. The trumpet will sound. This is at the coming of the Lord. And the dead will be raised imperishable. And we'll all be changed. 
we will all be changed. We will all be changed. We can put theology around it and what we think is going to happen, but he's going to change us. He's going to change us. He's going to rectify all of it. When he comes, it says in Colossians that, that when Messiah comes, when Messiah is, our life is revealed in Colossians, when Messiah, our life is revealed, we will be revealed along with him at his coming. So there's a revelation of who we are that he is going to repair. But while we are here, we're in this place of wanting to go that way, but being pulled this way, and I know I want to go this way, but I dealt with this trauma in my life and I can't get over it. And God wants to bring us on this Sabbath of return to a place of recognizing a pattern that's not of him. At least recognize it. Recognize it. The pattern isn't of him. The behavior isn't of him. The thought process isn't of him. And we can repent, and we repent, and we repent. But I got to tell you something. When God spoke, let there be light over the universe and over in your mother's womb, he didn't just think it. He didn't just assume it. He spoke it. And faith comes by hearing, hearing, hearing by the word of God. Our land, our earth is starving to hear truth from God. And sometimes we could think it, but we're not hearing it. We need to hear it. We need to have it enter into our ears. And then whatever happens when a, something goes into our ears and goes into our brain and whatever it does, the hearing of it is transformative. Faith comes by hearing. Three weeks, we will be reciting Yehi Or. Let there be light. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Three weeks from today. You know, if you ask some psychologists, how long does it take to create a new habit, a new pattern? Some, some will say three weeks. Some say longer. But who cares what they say? We can always create new patterns. And we can create new patterns if we hear truth that counteracts the lies. Today, I'm giving y'all a homework assignment. Three weeks, three weeks of breaking patterns. If you struggle with self-loathing, when that thing rises up, you say, I am worthy of love. When you feel like you want to go and take part of that addictive thing, speak truth. I am not addicted. How about that? You believe that you are addicted. How about I'm not addicted, and speak it. Speak it. If you've been trying to break that cigarette habit or whatever the habit is, I am not addicted. You want to hear truth. Your soul, your spirit wants to hear truth. And don't wait for somebody else to just be edifying you and edifying you and edifying you. Speak it to yourself. Let this come into your ears, those words of life. I am not addicted. I can move forward from my trauma. How about that? How about when you're like, I can't move forward. It was too traumatic. Speak the opposite. I can move forward from my trauma. I am strong. 
Somebody's saying amen. I don't know where that's coming from. Somebody's listening somewhere. How about, I am not afraid. No, I'm serious. This is homework. This isn't a sermon. This is homework. This is practical. I am telling everyone here to go back, and when you feel something arise in you, something that you struggle with recurringly, a pattern that you know is not of the Lord, but it's just some place you go back to and you go back to and you go back to. Speak truth over that when it arises. I am not lustful, men. Speak it. Speak it. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Yes, I know it. Speak it. Speak it. I love my spouse. How about we speak that when we start to feel like we don't? So that one got real silent. I can hear MNs from the phone on that one. That phone was silent for that one. But I'm serious. Speak truth. How about... I am healthy. My heart is healthy. My brain is healthy. My nervous system is healthy. My lungs are healthy. (laughs) The amends have started on the phone again. I love my husband. (laughs) This is homework. You know, I love that this time is centered around the sounding of the shofar because we get to hear it. And the shofar blast is an emulation of the voice of God. I happen to believe that if when he spoke, let there be light, it sounded like a shofar. Because we see that in the heavenlies throughout the scriptures, sound of the shofar. And I'm grateful that we get to hear that. But we, you know, we're in the natural. So we hear a shofar and it sounds like a ram's horn. It sounds like something just that, that you do. So speak it in the language that you know. Speak it in the language you understand. Oh, and don't think it's a coincidence that these statements start with I am. Because you're putting the name of God on these. I am not afraid. I am not nervous about my finances. I am not nervous about my employment. I'm not nervous about my job. Yeah, feel free to speak it out. You don't even need to raise your hand. Just, what are these things? Three weeks to break a pattern. Three weeks to break a pattern. If you post them on Facebook, you get extra credit. And we're going to come back here in three weeks when we're reading Let There Be Light, and we're going to give testimony on patterns that broke. And don't think it's a coincidence that it starts with I am. Because we'll put God's signature on this because God puts his signature on his book. It's like an autographed book. He has no problem putting his signature on truth. We can do all things. We'll put his signature on what we're saying because we can do all things through Mashiach who strengthens us. It may be impossible with man, but with God, all things are possible. Three weeks to break a pattern.
your patterns, your false patterns, patterns that aren't aligned, those patterns are not your portion. Your disposition is not your destiny. I can alliterate all night long. All night long. Your failings are not your fate. Your limitations are not your lot. I can alliterate all day long. So, are you with me? Three weeks. Three weeks. Break the pattern. And speak truth. Even if you got to do it a hundred times a day. When you feel that pattern repeating itself, that thought process, whatever it is, I am not hateful. I am not jealous. Counteract the lie with truth. Let your soul, your spirit, your body hear it. Come into your ears and enter in and let that pattern change. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, there's a great verse in um, Shabbat Shuva. The scripture, the Haftorah portion of Shabbat Shuva is from Hosea 14. And it says, return, O Israel. Oh, you got to hear this. Return, O Israel, for you have fallen because of your sins. Take words with you and return. Take words with you and return. And then it proceeds. These are the words you got to say. But I say this right now on this Shabbat Shuva. Return, O Israel. Take words with you. Take words with you. I am confident. I am trusting of the Lord with my finances. Take words with you. And return to the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Three weeks to change your pattern. And I assure you that this is one of those sermons I need to speak and preach to myself. I assure you of that. I'm preaching to myself here. And I've already been doing it, by the way. So for me, it's longer than three weeks. So three weeks for the rest of us to change a pattern. Thank you, Father. Oh, does anybody have any of those statements? Now, it doesn't have to be an I am statement, right? Whatever it is that counteracts the lie. I have a future. 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 I have a hope. I have a hope. I am hopeful. See, if you feel like you're, like you're, you feel hopeless, you feel like this, the world is just crashing in on you and the situation is crashing in on you and you feel like there's no hope, counter it. I have hope. I have hope. I am case of what we're going to do. So I'm assuming that some, some of you folks have some, have some phrases in your mind through this. Let's speak them out with the sounding of the shofar. Thank you, Father. And then we will close the service. Where is my shofar? Yeah, come on, you can help. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. So, and what I want you to do, now you could say it as loud as you want or as silent as you want because it is personal. But your statement that you feel that you're going to be saying to yourself when that thing, that pattern starts again and again and again and again and again, the way you're going to counter it with words, 
Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. Speak it out as the shofar sounds. As loud or as soft as you need to. Amen. Father, we lift up this time to you, Father. We just, we pray that you meet us in this place, Adonai. We know, Father, that we've, throughout our lives, have believed lies, whether they've come in when we were young or in babies or in the womb or if it's generational. Lies have come in and lies have become a pattern. And we know it. We've always known it. We've always known it. We've always known it, that this thought is not of you. And the Bible talks about the wrestling of the new man and the old man. And we always knew that. We knew it. We knew it. But we can't get past it. Father, today we're going to try to speak life into it for three weeks. And we're going to commit as much as we're able, God willing, to counter it with truth. Simple, truthful statements that are aligned with what you saw when you created us and said it is good. Thank you, Father. We lift it up to you. In Yeshua's name, amen.